Gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, just doing a little small snippet. We've got this man right here. Now, many of you may recognize him, but some of you young cats, you young people may not recognize him. And the reason why you may not recognize him is because he ain't popular today like he was in the 70s and early 80s. His name is Phil Donahue. Many of you know Phil Donahue, don't you? Phil Donahue. This young man, I was a fan of. I'll, I'll admit it. I watched the Phil Donahue show. I liked the Phil Donahue show. It was a, um, and what's, what's Sally Jesse Raphael? Okay, those were my two favorites. And I know I'm bringing back some memories. Do not email me, text me, and call me talking about Phil Donahue and Sally Jesse Raphael. Okay, this is not a, oh, I like them too fast. Okay, this video is not about that. Phil Donahue is going to talk about a particular case, okay? And look at how he talks about it. Now, I bring this up because of the so-called controversy regarding the football issue. And it's not about football. It just so happens a football player decided to protest in a certain way against the so-called establishment. And he did it in the only way that he thought would generate attention, okay? Because he knew it was about that all-powerful dollar, which has no power at all, has no backing by anything, has no value, but he did it because he knew the marketing value, okay? It just so happens if he happened to have been a different color other than what he was, the issue never would have spiked the way it did. But we have people saying that he does not have the right to do that. That he should be fired. And that other football players should be fired. We have an idiot, a moron, an imbecile, that's right, I said it, tweeting, causing a tweeter cane a tweeter cane is basically a storm, but not a storm of any magnitude, but a hurricane on Twitter. So he's causing a tweeter cane. I don't want to call it a trump -a cane okay, because that you won't get it. So it's a tweeter cane okay? And he gets on Twitter because he's so juvenile, and he voices his opinion, knowing that he's going to generate emotion and feelings and he does this because he needs to be popular he needs the attention he's an attention grabber you don't believe me take a look you know he's the one that tells people to shut up when they're talking to him doesn't want to talk to him anymore no don't get me wrong i understand him because i tell people to shut up when i don't want to talk to him but i don't tell them to shut up shut up i tell them specifically oh i'm sorry this conversation is over just that simple i'll tell people that in a split second Oh, I'm sorry. That conversation is over. This conversation is over. Oh, I'm sorry. You're still talking? <laughs> My bad. Okay, that's me. But this idiot seems to be able to tell people what's so-called American and what is not. Can we find out from the Supreme Court what's American and what's not American? Phil, can you, can you help us understand this? Awareness of who Robert Jackson was came, like most things, later. Do you guys know who Robert Jackson is? Go to robertjackson.com. Read what he had to say about what's American and what's not American. But we're going to let Phil continue to talk. In life to me. Um, I, I am fascinated with the Jehovah's Witness cases before the Supreme Court. This video is not about Jehovah's Witnesses, but I need you to pay attention. This man is not a Jehovah's Witness. Okay, he still wears a bow tie. So he might be Nation of Islam. I'm kidding! I'm kidding. I have a lot of friends who are Nation of Islam, so I'm kidding. All right. Los Angeles, Nation of Islam, Nation of Islam. Crenshaw, Nation of Islam, Nation of Islam. You know what I'm saying? So it's a joke. Yeah, I got a lot of people going to be mad at me for that one. Let's go. It's been remarked by scholars. More than one scholar has made the point that Jehovah's Witnesses have made a greater contribution to the shaping of First Amendment law 
than any other person or institution in the history of American jurisprudence. This what he's saying is that Jehovah's Witnesses have won more cases as an organization before the Supreme Court than any other group in American history, over nine. And these successful cases, although in another interview he mentions the first case, which was later overturned in 19, the first case happened in 1940, and then a couple of years later, three years later, it was overturned. But he's mentioning this to let you know of his admiration that what they did actually benefited everyone. And so I'm not showing you this because he's talking about Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm showing you this because of what he's saying Justice Robert Jackson of the Supreme Court said regarding what's American. Let's let him continue. The story fascinates me. I'm waiting for the movie. There's a Pulitzer Prize out there for some odd when in 1940, with America at war, young men dying on foreign battlefields, they wouldn't salute the flag. And comes now this, it, it, the Supreme Court comes down from the mountain, eight to one, the only dissenting voice. And if you didn't salute the flag, you were expelled from school. The entire class, I stood, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Jehovah's Witness. Of the United States. You're in the third grade. A uh, little William Govitis in the first witness case, Minersville, Pennsylvania, held out of his pockets. His sister, Lillian, tells us this who, by the way, lives outside of Atlanta today. And eight to one, they have to salute the flag. And in the months that follow, a thousand, there were a thousand injuries of Jehovah's Witnesses. These people were scum. Ladies and gentlemen, many of those injuries were to children. That's right, we have adults and children beating up these children, school teachers, police officers, beating up these kids. Now we say beating because that's exactly what they were doing, beating them into submission. The teachers were commanded to beat them to make them salute the flag. And this would be three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, all the way up to high school. Why? Because somebody gave an order. Somebody made a decision. Somebody made a rule. There was, there was no law that said you had to salute the flag. Go ahead. Go ahead and find it. Well, the Supreme Court made a decision in 1940. Yeah, the Supreme Court did make a decision, but prior to that decision, there was no law. It was just something people did. Well, let, let's continue. Because the Supreme Court would later they correct their mistake. They wouldn't salute the flag, especially in a time of war. And the court said you, you had to salute the flag. Following that ruling, the, um, there was a, a castration in Iowa of a witness. What the? You gonna castrate somebody because they won't salute a stupid flag? I don't believe this. They burned down Kingdom Hall in Kennebunk, Maine. Well, I showed you the other day where in Russia they burned down a Kingdom Hall. Uh, not a Kingdom Hall, but a house of a Jehovah's Witness. Burning houses seems to be the thing. I, I have no idea where they get this Molotov cocktail thing, but it's been an, as American as apple pie. I mean, they've been burning houses and churches of them slaves all them years, and they just carried it on to Jehovah's Witnesses, huh? They put a rope around several Jehovah's Witnesses in Wheeling, West Virginia, and pulled them through. Mock hangings. Did you hear him say they put ropes around the necks of children because they wouldn't salute the flag and draw? They didn't drag them. He just said they walked them through town with the rope around their neck. But you will not hear him or anyone else say that they resisted, that they fought back. Go ahead. Go look at the reports. 1940 all the way to 1943. Go look at the reports. We're not even going to talk about the fact that the United States of America put Jehovah's Witnesses in internment camps. 
We're, we're not even going to go through that. Why would they put Jehovah's Witnesses in internment camp? They weren't at war with the Jehovah's Witnesses, were they? You better believe they were. But anyway, that's another story. But you never heard once about Jehovah's Witnesses fighting back. Even in Russia, you don't see Jehovah's Witnesses fighting back. What they did is they appealed, just like they said they would do. They appealed. They are not going to fight back. They're not going to protest. And then they're not going to violate the law. But then... They will not violate a law as long as it doesn't conflict with the supreme law, God's law, his mandate. So they will carry out their business, but they will do it in a manner to which it is not a stab in somebody's face. Let's let Donahue finish talking about them bringing kids through town with ropes around their necks, sort of like a mock hanging. The streets of the downtown area with people jeering. The American Legion wives would cook breakfast in the morning as the men prepared to meet the Jehovah's Witnesses as they were coming into town to evangelize and do their door-to-door. -door. You know, Jews have high holy days, Catholics have the, Ameri the holy sacrifice of the mass, uh, Islam, uh, Muslims go to Mecca, Jehovah's Witnesses go door-to-door. -door. That's their faith. And while we were throwing stones at them, expelling them, Catholic pastors mandated a boycott of Jehovah's Witnesses' business. They were, they were, they, they couldn't feed themselves. Can you believe this? The Catholic Church would boycott Jehovah's Witnesses so that they couldn't even go into a store and buy food? Imagine that, people. That... Because Mr. Popernick, I don't even know his name, I don't watch football. But because the football players won't stand up, nobody will do business with them. Oh, that's right, that is happening, isn't that? Isn't their sponsors pulling their endorsements? Of course they are. Isn't that the exact same thing? But I thought this was the land of the free, the home of the brave. I thought that's what that flag stood for. And the home of the brave. For the land of the free. Thank you, Roseanne Barr. And the home of the <laughs> Okay, thank you, Roseanne Barr. That's what she was doing. The hypocrisy, ladies and gentlemen. The very words of the very anthem that they are saying that they're claiming is patriotism and that people are supposed to respect, they are actually being the biggest hypocrites. Why? Because they're saying it is not the land of the free, that you don't have a right to your choice. You don't have the right to the freedom of choice. Again, remember, there is no freedom. As Solomon Burke, Ray Charles, and so many others have said, if one of us is chained, none of us are free. Even if that chain comes in the form of a Twitter, tweet, 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 cane. They were homeschooling, they lived in attics, but they kept the faith because the God King Jehovah was coming and this is what they were taught to do. This is their faith. It's not possible to overstate the hatred that existed for Jehovah's a witness. That hatred still exists today, so you can't overstate it. You sure can't. Uh, adherence. All right. Comes now the case back to the United States Supreme Court. Robert Jackson is now on the court. And he writes for the majority. What was the vote? When it was the second. Uh, Barnett. Seven to two. Seven to two. We still had two. Two said, no, you got to salute. You got to do the pledge. You must do the pledge in order to have order in this country. It is not unreasonable to ask a child to stand and salute his flag. What's wrong with this? Who would not do this? The only person, by the way, who got it right both times was Harlan Stone. We should know more about Harlan Stone. Can you imagine the only one who said this is a violation? Look at that. Everybody wants to give the Supreme Court so much credit. 
But the original vote in 1940 was 8 to 1. 8 to 1. Judge Stone was the only one who said, hey, wait a minute. Our First Amendment gives people the right to freedom of choice, freedom of religion, freedom of speech. And freedom of speech comes with it, the right to remain silent. You see, everybody thinks the right to remain silent came from Miranda. No, if you have the right to speak, you have the right to remain silent. That's where the right to remain silent comes from. It's the First Amendment. This judge says, hey, if they don't want to salute the flag, and if they are saying this is based on their religious beliefs, then they have that right. In this country, that is a constitutional right. One judge out of nine. Ah, but then when another case came that was brought by Jehovah's Witnesses, three years later, that vote was seven to two. Seven judges got it right, two judges got it wrong, but they were overruled. And from that point on, that became the precedent. And every case after that, it is because of that, ladies and gentlemen, that you hear about people having the freedom of speech, the right to peacefully assemble. It is because of those nine cases won by Jehovah's Witnesses, because most of them are First Amendment cases, that people have those freedoms now, that you have the right to voice your opinion. Remember, before you couldn't say certain things, Oh no! Now, right now on Google, they are looking for videos that talk about um, the Las Vegas incident being a false flag, being, um, I forgot the exact words that people were using in their titles, uh, being fake news. Okay, when they use terms like that, Google have been taking the videos down. Just like the fact that I used the fact of the social security routing number and showed you that from Google's on search engine. Because I put in the title social security administrative administration routing number, the videos were taken down. They said it was a violation of their community guidelines. If you go read the guidelines, there's nothing in there saying that you can't put social security administration routing number or anything to that effect. They said by doing that, I was encouraging individuals to violate the law. One of Jehovah's Witnesses, I am commanded to obey the law. As long as it doesn't conflict with God's law. As I mentioned earlier, Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia are obeying the law to the extent that it doesn't conflict with God's law. When it conflicts with God's law, they discreetly follow God's law. They don't go bambastically throwing it in your face. Phil, you have something you want to say. Let's listen to Phil, y'all. We cannot force these children to do something contrary to their faith, which says you shall not pledge allegiance to anything, any person, any institution, anything, but God, but God. All right. Hold on. Comes now the second, and this is where... Hold on, Robert hold on, Jackson hold on, Phil. Hold on, Phil. We got to let you say that again, because a lot of people again, don't understand that. Uh-oh. I forgot. I did it again. Oops. I did it again, y'all. It's this stupid, this stupid YouTube thing. Yeah, it ain't gonna let me do it. I opened it up in the wrong window. And if you didn't see and the I am phone, so so sorry from school. Let's do this. We're gonna copy y'all hold on a second. I, okay, he's gonna continue. Throwing stones at them, expelling Catholic pastors mandated a boycott of Jehovah's Witnesses' business. They were, they were, they, they couldn't feed themselves. They were homeschooling. They lived in attics, but they kept the faith because the God King Jehovah was coming, and this is what they were taught to do. This is now. Here is the part I want you to pay attention to, because he's about to explain, and he's not a Jehovah's Witness, but he completely understands the reason why they don't salute flags because he's talked to them. He must have. Because he's almost explaining it the way I would explain it to you. It's not possible to overstate the hatred that existed for Jehovah's uh, Witness uh, adherence. All right. Comes now the case back to the United States Supreme Court. Robert Jackson is now on the court. And he writes for the majority. 
What was the vote? When, it was the second, the Barnett. Seven to two. Seven to two. We still had two. Two said, no, you got to salute. You got to do the pledge. You must do the pledge in order to have order in this country. It is not unreasonable to ask a child to stand and salute his flag. What's wrong with this? Who this is the thing, ladies and gentlemen. That's the first thing they do is they try to make it seem like it's it's not really a big deal. I mean, all you're doing is just saying the words. It's just words. It don't really mean anything. That is the first thing they say, that the words don't mean anything. But then, the next time they turn around, they speak about what the words mean. And how men and women have died for the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, not a single person I know in history has died for the national anthem. I would love for somebody to show me the records of a person who has died for the national anthem. Because we would know that would be a lie. But that's what they're saying on the news. All the men and women who have fought and died. Oh, Lord. Let's continue. You got it right. Both times was Harlan Stone. We should know more about Harlan Stone. Can you imagine the only one who said this is a violation of the First Amendment? We cannot force these children to do something contrary to their faith, which says you shall not pledge allegiance to any thing, any person, any institution, anything, but God. But all right, comes now the second, and this is where... Now, hold on. Again, Jehovah's Witnesses have been telling people that for from day one. They said it in that case. They said it in the case before, that when you pledge allegiance, you are pledging your life. I pledge allegiance to the flag. So Jehovah's Witnesses say no. Then when you say the national anthem, pay attention, people. They have you place your hand over your heart. That is a solemn oath. I refuse. But see, that's my nature. I'm stubborn. So nobody has ever tried to make me pledge allegiance. I've had teachers who tried to talk me into it, but... Yeah, I'm sorry, trying to talk me into something is like talking to a brick wall. See how much of a conversation you'll get with that thing. I've seen a lot of cars try to talk to brick walls. Usually the car loses. Even though the brick wall may be a little damaged, that car gets serves nothing them the better. Okay, so my teachers who try to coach me are sending my friends over to talk to me. I don't do peer pressure very well, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. But I do prefer understanding nobody convinced me not to salute the flag. All they had to do was tell me that people worship the flag. That's all I had to hear is people worship a piece of cloth. Ain't no way on this man. When I hear about these people who kneel in front of statues and pray to statues, Lord have mercy. Ain't no way in the world you ever going to get me to kneel in front of some stupid statue or some stupid image or some stupid picture. That's right. I said stupid. Because the God I serve, everybody wants to talk about Ten Commandments. The very first three commandments say that you shall not have any other God before him. And you shall not worship any image of anything in the likeness of anything in the heavens or on the earth or underneath the waters. It says anybody doing so is likened to an individual who hates Yahweh, Jehovah, 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 Yovah, all the other different pronunciations of the name. It all says the same, that to worship another image, to worship an idol, to worship a statue, to worship an image of anything is in opposition to the true God. I've understood that since I was a kid. And so I choose not to. Nobody made me understand that. Nobody brainwashed. Oh, God, they brainwash people. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. He's just so brainwashed. Oh, God, if he wasn't so brainwashed, he'd be stupid. But now he's just stupid without the brainwashing. Your mama. Let's let Phil keep talking. Robert Jackson just dazzled me. Again, to tell you what you already know, his, his uh, uh, flourish was one of the greatest moments, I think, in the history of Supreme Court writing. When Wait a minute. 
Now, see, again, he ain't talking about Jehovah's Witness. He's talking about Robert Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't done any research on Robert Jackson, but there's a website called www.robertjackson.com. I'm going to go to www.robertjackson.com, and I'm going to take a look at it because I'm interested. I'm not going to go there now because we're not going to waste your time. I'm going to go there for my own benefit because I do my own research. Phil is only talking about it. I haven't done the research as I'm admitting right here. So I'm going to go look for it myself. I'm going to do my own research. I'm not going to take Phil's word for it because Phil, although I like Phil, I like Phil. To this day, I like Phil. He is still the same person. He has the same personality. His gestures, everything about him is the same from when he did his TV show. It's just that if you look at his TV show, he doesn't always sit on this side. He sits on this side. But this time, just like Sally Jesse Raphael, this side, this side. I like Phil because most of the commentators now and the TV show hosts sit on this side and let the guests sit on this side. I don't know when they started that, why they started that, but let's let Phil talk, y'all. He said on the occasion of the second case, seven to two, speaking for the minor for the majority, if there is any fixed star in our constitutional constellation, it is that no official, high or petty, shall prescribe what shall be orthodox in religion, nationalism, politics, or any other matters. Wait, did you just say the Supreme Court said that no politician, no matter how high or how petty, can sit up there and describe what is orthodox nationally for the United States of America? So how come this high and petty, tweeter storming, trump caning moron, is up there telling people they should be fired because it is unpatriotic and unconstitutional for them not to stand for the national anthem, for them to kneel during the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, I would never kneel, but apparently people don't understand what kneeling is all about. There is a new TV series called uh, Star Trek Discovery. By the way, there are two Star Treks that are out. You have Orville, which is a piece of junk. Everybody was talking about how much great and better than Discovery Orville would be. Orville is a piece of junk. Oh, God, that stupid show is so petty and the acting is so horrible. It's like they went back to 1950 and did a Star Trek. Uh, by the way, most of you don't know, Star Trek came out roughly in 1967. So when I said he went back to 1950 and did a Star Trek, it's worse than the original acting from the original first season. Okay? But anyway, in Discovery, they have the Klingons. And in the Klingons, you have them trying to unite the 24 different fractions of the Klingons because they're divided. And it's so far in the future that they thought they were extinct. They've been in hiding. And so now they've been united, but the leader who united them is now dead. And he left a prodigy in his wake. Well, now the prodigy had another one of the former leaders come to speak to him. As that leader comes to speak to him, he bows. He kneels before him. Now you're getting my point. This leader says to him, I'm sorry. You only kneel to your enemy. We are not enemies. And so he made him stand up, told him we're on the same level. Ladies and gentlemen, kneel before Zod. These individuals are taking a knee during the national anthem in protest. But what you, nobody's getting, when you take a knee to someone or something, you're actually paying more respect than not taking a knee. Nobody pays attention to that. Nobody gets it. Because they never paid attention to the understanding of kneeling before a king, kneeling before someone superior. When in old times people went before the king, they kneeled. How dare you not kneel when the king walks in? You guys have heard the stories. So why are people getting offended that the individuals are still showing respect, but saying they're not showing respect? Because it's the media. 
The media makes everybody thinks that something is wrong when it ain't wrong. The media makes everybody thinks that there's only one shot being fired from one direction when there are a melee of shots being fired from three different directions. And we have the photos showing that there are bullets coming from, from the hotel, three different locations. Sorry, just thought I'd bring that up. Hold on, Phil. Nor may he force to confess by word or deed a belief therein. You don't, Americans, cannot be made to believe anything. Americans cannot be forced to believe in the United States Constitution itself. Americans cannot be forced to believe in the United States of America itself. Essentially what Robert Jackson and nine other, you know, I don't mean, they, these are old men looking down over that mahogany bench. So, and they looked at that, at those children, and they said, you obey your Ladies and gentlemen, uh-oh, sorry. Hold on. I think it went back and, uh, yep, it did that when I hit the space button. Let's see if we can bring him back a little bit. We're going to bring him back to where he was. It just, I, it took me a minute to get that that's what I need to do. Okay. Took me a minute to figure that out. Okay. <clears throat> sorry, got to clear my throat. You know, I don't mean... They, these are old men looking down over that mahogany bench. So, and they looked at that, at those children, and they said, you obey your parents. Ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court of the United States told those children who were told that they better salute the flag. There were several of them in the courtroom. They were brought to Washington, D.C., to that Supreme Court hearing for that decision that was being handed down by the Supreme Court on that day. And the judges, after they came to their decision, after Justice Jackson came to his conclusion, he told the children, you obey your parents. Hmm. You know, the scriptures tell children to do the exact same thing. Children, be obedient to your parents, for it is the first command with a promise. Isn't that interesting? Children, be obedient to your parents, for it is the first command with a promise that you may live a long time on the earth. That was the promise. You obey your parents, you get to live a long time on the earth. That's the promise. But, but I see children who obey their parents and they die. Well, that's because the earth... It's supposed to live forever, and there is a thing called the resurrection, but that's another story, and we're not here to talk about that, so stop it! Let's go. That, that gives me a, a chill. That makes me a proud American. That's how, this is how secure we are. We're so secure... We know it's absurd to try it. The, the, the Soviets did that. The Soviets says you can't believe in God, which is like saying don't think of a pink elephant. You know, it's, you know but to, to have Jackson put it that way. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think you guys understand. He just said it's like saying don't think of a pink elephant. <laughs> wait a minute. Every last one of y'all just thought of a pink elephant. And if you didn't just think of a pink elephant, you just thought of a pink elephant. Okay, that's what he's trying to say. When the Soviets were telling people that there was no God, that communism was the only way, which is why they banned Jehovah's Witnesses. They allow the other religions to do whatever they want because of the favors, political favors. But Jehovah's Witnesses don't go to war. We don't fight in war. We don't become part of the army. Now, we will do civilian services for the countries that demand 
elicitation in war, elicitation in the army. But we will not take arms. We will not support arms, which is one reason why I had to quit the Army Corps of Engineers. The division I worked for, we actually were in charge of requisitioning missiles and weapons and so on and so forth. Yes, I saw the requisitions. I was part of all of that. At the age of 16, I'm requisitioning <laughs> military equipment, okay? I stayed away from it. I had, that, that was my job. I stayed away from it. I did not do it. I gave it to someone else. However, it got to the point to where my conscience said no. I couldn't even be a part of it. Even if I wasn't part of that part of it, I could not allow myself to be a part of it because I cannot condone the killing of people on any level. So I cannot support the military. Oh, how dare you not support the military? That's unpatriotic. That's un-American. Phil, tell him what's up. And his reputation for taking all those whereases of all those decisions that baffle non-legal minds and to shape it into language that is so pure, so economical, and so precise, and so understandable was, I think, one of his great gifts uh, to American jurisprudence. And so, especially at a time like today, and I think Robert Jackson did more to help us understand why this is so important than any other person who ever sat on the bench. How do you feel about Jackson? <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the let me uh, show it to you one second. The story, this is the young lady uh, who is one of those kids. She, Jehovah's Witness, she's one of those kids. Let's do that. I'm just going to click on it. I'm not going to watch the whole 18 minutes. I'm curious as to how they're going to start the story. As a matter of fact, I'm going to watch this story and you guys go watch something else. I just wanted to show you all this to let you all see if individuals really should be penalized or talked about or criticized for kneeling and not saying, Oh, say can you see? <clears throat> you know what I mean? Have a good day. Have a good life. Have a good night.